Well, the tourism and hospitality industry certainly hit hard during the recent COVID lockdowns, but as New South Wales opens up and people start to travel again, there may no longer be the workforce there once was. Well, joining me live now is the Director of AHA in New South Wales, John Green. John, good to see you again. So with the new Premier and given his pro-business credentials, do you have more confidence in him? Look, obviously, we've been working with the entire team from the New South Wales government since this pandemic began. Um, Premier Perrottet uh, has been excellent as Treasurer, and so we expect that to continue. And he's, he's focused on reinvigorating the New South Wales economy we see is just we'll, we'll go ahead leaps and bounds. If we get to 70% double vaccination before this weekend, would you like to see things opened up before Monday? Look, the, the um, projections are that we'll reach 70% in the next two days. We're, we're rapidly approaching the 11th of, of October anyway. So, you know, people are planning to reopen on Monday in relation to staffing, in relation to their food produce, cleaning their beer lines, and also providing some very much needed training for staff. So we're working towards that day. If it happened earlier, yes, we'd be ready. But we're more, we're more focused on when we get to 80% and shortly thereafter, we should be really working on getting that one in four square metre patronage so that we're currently at 25% indoors. If we can get to 50% much quicker, then that would really... Uh, assist the venues that have been doing it so tough. So, I mean, j just getting back onto the 70% target, it wouldn't be an issue for what for, for pubs or restaurants to be able to get stock in a few a few days in advance and be ready for to open up this weekend, in your opinion? Look, the, definitely some venues would open. Some would make the decision not to open. I'm aware of some venues that actually aren't opening uh, next Monday. They're, they're waiting till about the Wednesday. Uh, look, there are arguments for and against. Um, obviously, starting on a Monday means you can ease into trade, get back into the procedures, the new vaccine check-ins, etc. But there would definitely be venues that would be willing to open uh, later this week. Mm. And just getting back onto your second point there about 80%, so that's going to be your new fight. That, that would be your new message to the new Premier. Probably not a new message, but that's your message to the new Premier to, to be able to get more patrons into a complex or a restaurant or a pub um, so they can make more money out of it? Look, obviously, we've been operating under restrictions since March last year. We've been shut down in New South Wales for a combination of over 200 days, over 100 days for this latest shutdown. So, yeah, the businesses want to get uh, back into what they do best, you know, seamless entry, getting people into their hospitality venues. But we're, we're in a situation where... Yeah, we know we need to operate safely and, and we're used to operating under regulation. So, yes, we think that uh, after we get to 80%, as we're, we're heading towards 90%, we should be able to get to that 50% uh, capacity indoors well before the 1st of December. The Premier is, um, is looking at rebates for companies that lose perishable stock in the event of future snap lockdowns. Um, is that something that that you would be supporting? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, obviously we've had areas of New South Wales that have reopened only to shut down four days later. Yeah. Think of all the, the, all, the, all the stock, all the perishables that have been destroyed at that time. And also, at this point, you've got to feel for Victoria and what they've gone through and the number of lockdowns they've gone through. So a process that allowed for recompense of some of the, the losses. Uh, you know, imagine a power outage every every week or two, destroying all your stock. So that, yeah. that would be a welcome. What would a suitable rebate be? Oh, look, obviously what we've found with uh, with government is, is they've provided tailored responses, just as we've seen JobKeeper, JobSaver rather, uh, slowly filtering away as businesses get back into to, to business, but understanding that they've been operating under duress, mm. the, the same should be the case for any any rebate that it's it's dependent on you know, the losses sustained. Sure, yeah, and, and also the size of the business. But is there a range? Can you give us a range of, of how much it costs by, by simply throwing out perishables? Oh, it, it can be, depending on the size of the business, it can be in the tens of thousands of dollars for some of the larger venues. But it's all it's all scalable because a mum and dad pub in Galarganbone, their, their, their losses are going to be equally dire than a, than a large venue. So it really has to be something that is estimated based on discussions that should, have, should that be the, the case that we'd look into. Quite a sight, though, just to wrap up, John, now, quite a sight of those trucks pulling up with kegs out the front of bars and restaurants and, and pubs around the state. 
Look, there's a, there's a lot of beer lines being cleaned, a lot of tables being uh, washed down, and there's a lot of people ready for a schooner next Monday. <laughs>